Um, so this video is picking up um, after the first introduction to story maps. Uh, hopefully be a little bit shorter and then we'll, we'll, we'll complete it off with the third one. Um, so in the first video we really got a, a, an introduction to some of the basics, uh, you know, how you go to story maps and sign in, you create a new story, um, how you pick a template, and then I think, you know, most critically, this, this concept of a, a main stage that's referencing a map. You know, that's, that's really important, and I think it's going to come um, far more apparent why it's, it's important in the, in the final video in this series. But remember, this story map is not a map. The story map is like a window. It's a, it's a, it's a copy. It's like a stylized reference of the actual map. Anything you want to show in a story map needs to be referencing one or a series of maps, depending on what you want to show. And it's this area that you would make the edits and the changes. Now, in the third video, as I said, I'll show you how they interact. You know, how when you make changes here and save it, they show up in the story map and, you know, so that you're, you're able to remain constantly dynamic. But this video, I'm just going to build on what we learned in the last one a little bit. Um, and just kind of show how you, you, you add stuff out a bit and, you know, how you play with the data. So, pretty easy, right? You've created a, a thing here. It's always good to save. A um, couple things up here as you're starting to progress. You can always go to settings, and if you didn't like the layout and you wanted to change it back, you can change it. Um, you know, you can moderate the size. If maybe we want the panel to be pretty small and then, like, a link to share it at the bottom. Uh, if you want the theme... Whatever options they have will be there for you. You're able to choose the font. You have some limitations on your font, you know, but you can mix it around as you need it. And then, you know, if you wanted to put a U3 thing or something up in a header, you could. Um, you know, share. This is just what you'll do right now. It's private. Um, you know, only I would be able to see it. When you're ready, you would share it with your organization, you know, then anyone who's in ArcGIS Online and they can look at it. And then if this is something you're just going to post that everyone would want, you would obviously go up here. And then view story. I'm not going to do it yet because we don't really <laughs> have much of a story. We have one map. But once you're ready, you can keep clicking on that because that shows you... Um, oh, stayed in public, Braxton. Because that essentially shows you, um, you know, what it looks like. So you've done your first thing. All pretty logical. Makes sense. And now it's time to keep going. So next thing you want to do is you just add a section. Now, it will always default to the extent of the previous map. So unless you need it to change, you can keep it. Um, but if you want to change stuff, right, like for content, maybe I'll come in here and I'll keep the institutions on, but perhaps I'll do a, um, like, where the cohort is in the West. And, yeah, it seems good enough for now. Or maybe I'll show where there's distressed and semi-distressed neighborhoods. Hopefully those will even show up. Who knows if that data is damaged. There we go. I'll save the content. And I want this map to definitely zoom in because I'm looking at like a very particular area now. So I'm going to zoom all the way in. Maybe to something like that. Get a nice little extent uh, for people to see here. And you know, I'll save my location, and you know, just to, to demonstrate, maybe I know people are like super obsessed about that one, so maybe that pop up will, will pop up no matter what. And then there's my main stage. Uh, what do I call this next section? Is you know, second slide. And then what am I going to put here? Maybe this is my second slide. Yes, it is. It is the second slide. Or whatever you want to put. Um, you know, for now, just add that. Seems good enough. And, and there you go. And, and now you can actually start playing around with stuff, right? So you save it, and you can actually look what it's like when you scroll through. And again, right, you made that pop up automatically, so they can get rid of it by clicking an X. But it'll always pop up automatically unless you go in here and say, actually, that's super distracting, right? I just want to give my... Uh, my um, user the the ability you know to click on stuff if they want um, but I don't really want it myself All right, so there we go now we go to my second slide so that's fairly easy um, to click back and forth there's also another cool feature you can have uh, called like interactivity um, so these are pretty neat they're right here they're called story actions 
Um, there's like a couple options here. So the main one that we're going to learn that you can use, and again, right, you can always click on an information if you want it. The main one I'm going to teach right now that's probably the most useful is to change the main stage content. So you actually may want to provide a feature that is, it's like part of your narrative, but perhaps it exists slightly outside of your narrative. So your narrative flows you through a story, you know, but you know when you get to a certain slide, just like a, a good storyteller, that there's always optional room for some color. And maybe you want the user to be able to click on something, or you want the ability to click on something that won't advance the story, right, but will change the map, right? So it'll show something a little bit different, or bring out a new layer, or, you know, do something to that effect. And you do it with here. So, like, I'll show you example one. And the thing is, if you select that, notice that you're suddenly given these options, right? So that's the main stage. Um, you know, other options is by clicking on it, uh, an address or a place can get located. Uh, you can navigate back and forth to like the home section or a past section. Um, you know, those are the main ones. We won't focus on these two, but we can we can do this, change the main stage. So what I could do here is maybe I like the location, but I definitely want like the content to change. And, and now maybe instead of showing that, I could show like maybe I'll find the number of institutions that are accessible. Um, within like a, a, a 30 minute drive and again that analysis all that work was done in a web map you did it before you ever created this I'm simply referencing it here right that's what story maps is it's just a reference point you're not creating anything new that's why it's going to be a, a bit easier of a tutorial to wrap your head around than some of the later ones we're going to teach when we show how you might actually create a web app so that's really all I need and I'd apply it See, it's kind of got a different color and a shade to it. Maybe I could really try to make it stand out so my uh, my user's seeing it here. Let me see. So it's clickable. And then I would save. And, you know, to get the full effect, let's actually do this kind of view story thing that I mentioned before. Right? This is what y either your thing would look like if you're showing it to someone or how it would look to your user when they uh, engage and when they interact with it. So I would go to something like this. I've got my example content, blah, blah, blah. I can start navigating through my story by going down. Notice we're changing the extent, right? It's never fixed. People can always engage with it. They can zoom in and zoom out. They can always click on any data that you've given your user the ability to click on. But you're talking, and then maybe someone asks a question like, okay, I, you know, I buy that this is an interesting boundary you might want to create right here. But how accessible is it to a lot of hospitals? And you may be able to say, well, let me show you how accessible it is. This map is now showing you the number of institutions that are accessible within a 30-minute drive. And you did it just with that, so you can go right back. So that's what it does. It allows you to change the flow here without changing your narrative, so you could just keep going on to your third slide afterwards. Right. So if I were to create a third slide, for example, that perhaps uh, you know, jumped up to like a different area. So now I'll make a new slide. And, you know, instead of focusing maybe on the, um, you know, the west side here, this is my, Shay's, Shay's bad organization here, please forgive me. Instead of focusing on the west side, maybe it jumps up um, to the north, you know, comes up like right here. Third slide. This is my third slide. You can also come in on the legend I forgot to say and make sure that that's always open. That's an option here. Save it. And then now if I view, you know, really helps you understand the, the point for those stage interactions a little bit more, right? Hey, this is my first slide. I'm telling my story. I want to add some color to this slide, but I don't want to interrupt the flow of my narrative. So let me add some color. And you can do as many of those as you want. Like you could have a, your whole story map could just be that. You know, different things people choose. But then people, when they're tired of this, maybe they go back to this one, right? So now they're back into the main narrative. They're flowing up here, so on and so forth. Um, you know, and the rest is, is pretty much similar. You know, you just add sections. You change your text. You... Uh, add some kind of windows, and, and that's the basic story map, right? Doing that will give you enough to be able to tell a really decent story, and you can play around with one of the eight templates. 
um, you know, and play around with the, the HTML or how you link to images and stuff. But, you know, it's really just a kind of a mixing and matching of the same, you know, 8 to 10 core criteria to really make a map. So I'm going to follow up with one more video on this that just uh, shows a little bit more about uh, this kind of thing I've referenced in the beginning that, that a story map isn't the map. It is simply a lens through which we are telling uh, the, the actual, or uh, showing the actual map. So I'm going to show you kind of how they interact with each other because it, it will, I guarantee, take a little bit of getting used to, um, you know, having to change things here and then see them reflected as options here. So I'll, I'll walk through that in the, in the final slide.